In part two of this lesson where we find the wavelength of light for a transition in the hydrogen atom, we ended off with questions two and three. Let's start with question two. The question reads, determine the wavelength of the light absorbed when an electron in a hydrogen atom makes a transition from an orbital that's an n is equal to two to an orbital of n is equal to seven. Now we learn in question number one that to do this we need this formula where h times c over lambda gives us the change in energy or the energy of a photon. And in order to find delta E, we can use one of two formulas. We can use this formula and use this constant, or we can use the Rydberg equation and this constant. So we're going from an n level of 2 to an n level of 7. And that's important that you know this, because depending on what the final and initial n levels are, those numbers get placed in there. So the first thing that I'll do is find out what delta E is and then place that number into here and solve for lambda. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's use the Rydberg equation. We have delta E is equal to negative 2 decimal 18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 1 over n and our n value, our final n value is 7 so I'll replace this n with 7 and 7 to the power of 2 is 49 minus 1 over 4 because 2 to the power of 2 is 4. I'll take this number and place it into this equation. The left side will be the product of these. And mind you, if you want a more detailed explanation of what's happening, make sure you watch part 1 because we go into more detail at the first part. And we have h times c over lambda h is Planck's constant, c is the speed of light, so I'll write those in into my equation. Notice that our equation is being filled in. We have Planck's constant, the speed of light, and we're looking for lambda, and to find lambda we use a little bit of algebra as we did in question number one. We'll multiply both sides by lambda and then divide both sides by the product of these two factors. We should end up with lambda is equal to the top part stays the same, divided by this. I'm going to go ahead and find out what that is equal to and show you what these absolutes do to that number. If the number is negative, it just makes it positive. So we have negative 2 decimal 18 times 10 to the power of negative 18 multiplied to 1 over 49 minus 1 over 4. And I'll multiply this to the answer that we just found. And we end up with 5 decimal zero, zero 005. Also notice that the number we get is positive. And the reason for that is because, taking a look at the question, we go from an orbital level that's smaller than the final. Whereas in question number one, it was the opposite. We went from 6 to 5. So now I'll find the product of these two numbers and then divide the product by the number that we just found over here. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 6.5. 626 times 10 to the power of negative 34 times 3 decimal zero zero times 10 to the power of 8 and all of that is being divided by the number you see on your screen. This gives us 3 decimal 97 1, 6 times 10 to the power of negative 7 and to three significant figures that's 3 decimal 97 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. 3.97 times 10 to the power of negative 7 meters. Now if you'd like to see the answer to question number 3 and question number 3 is different than what question number 1 and 2 asks make sure you watch part 3 of this series. We'll see you soon.